Good morning. Today we look at uh, Joshua 10 through 12. And the chapters 10 and 11 especially are um, times when uh, Israelites are defeating uh, and just totally wiping out the peoples that live in the land. And chapter 10 starts that you know with this King Adonai Zedek of Jerusalem heard about how jo Joshua had taken the city of Ai, Ai, and and uh, became worried and just you know because he was afraid he was next. So you know he uh, he had heard of the de destruction that had happened and everything that had happened. He had heard about uh, how Gibeon, that, that town, had gone and, you know, kind of deceitfully had made peace with, with Joshua and the Israelites. Um, but he went, uh, sent a message to these four other kings of other cities around, you know. And so this is, you know, each, each city was almost kind of a kingdom in itself. But uh, so these... These, he sent this message to these other kings saying, come and help me and let's attack Gibeon, you know, this city that had signed this peace treaty with Israel, you know, saying that, you know, we'll be your, your woodcutters, your water bearers, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll be your servants. But, and, and so this king figured that he went, if he went against this city that had, you know, kind of sworn, you know, to be servants to the, to Joshua and the Israelites, um, that somehow he would inflict damage on, you know, but anyway, then this, so this city and these people sent word to Joshua, we need your help. You know, we, we signed this agreement with you. Come help us. So Joshua does the, he sends his troops against the, uh, against the cities, against those Kings. And in verse eight, the Lord says to Joshua, do not fear them for I have handed them over to you. Not one of them shall stand against you. And, you know, so this, you know, five cities and, and sent all of their, their troops uh, upon the city of Gibeon and, and their people. And, and Joshua says, you know, the Joshua came suddenly upon them, having marched all night. And the Lord threw them into a panic. And then, listen, you know, a great slaughter had happened. But as they fled while they were going down the, the slope, the Lord threw large stones on them from heaven. And more of the more of them were killed because of those large stones than they were uh, afflicted by the Israelites with the sword. So God went to battle for them. It's just as God had said, you know, do not fear them for I will destroy them. You know, I will be with you in all of that. And in verse 12, on the day that the Lord gave all of these Amorites over to the Israelites, Joshua had said, the sun stands still at Gibeon and moon, you know, and the, so the sun stood still and the moon stood still. The God stopped the, the heavens and the earth and he stopped the, stopped the rotation of the earth so that the Israelites would be able to be successful in that battle. And, um, you know, it says the sun stopped in mid heaven and did not hurry to set for about a whole day. You know, there's been no day like it before or since, but it's just, an example of of God's power, and there are um, there are scientific things that that kind of prove that this actually happened, you know. And you know, and people will say, "Well, the Bible isn't true," but but more and more science proves more things in the Bible all true. And and um, so Joshua and the Israelites returned from the battle, but the kings, these five kings that had come up against them. Um, were together, but they weren't actually, you know, active in the battle or whatever. They had gone and hid in a cave, it tells us. And Joshua said, you know, when he found out that they had hit, hidden in a cave, you know, he uh, had them roll a large stone in front of the cave so they couldn't escape. And when they came back then from battle, Joshua says, roll that stone out and um, and, and bring them out. And these five kings then were all killed as well. And these two chapters are some of the of chapters again that just kind of you, you can hardly stand to read them because of all of the all of the people that are just you know it says slaughtered. My Bible uses that word several places, and it just you know it, it just it's it's such, it just doesn't seem right in so many ways. 
but God is showing his people Israel, Joshua and those others, that he's faithful to his word and that the Israelites are going to have this land. And, you know, like one of the kings that came was the king of Jerusalem. And Jerusalem comes to be the holy city, you know, and the, where the temple is built. And so all of these lands that Joshua and the Israelites are conquering are what become Israel. And, you know, this, so far what we've read is kind of the, the southern portion of the, of the area. And chapter 11, then it's, you know, the, more of the, the northern part, you know, other, other areas that they, they come in and, and, uh, all of these towns. And, and so, you know, that we've just had them, you know, battle these five kings and these five kings have, have been, you know, killed and, and put, you know, the, the lands have been conquered. And then, you know, verse 28, Joshua took Makeda on that day. And then Joshua passed from Makeda to Libna. And then he went to Libna to, you know, and it was just continued conquest and continued slaughter of, of all of these peoples that were there. Um, but the majority of the cities were not destroyed so that, I mean, I mean, why would you want to destroy all the cities and all that infrastructure? Um, but, you know, so, I mean, um, Jericho was, you know, a, a different story with the walls and every destruction there. But for the most part that, you know, the cities were left intact. And verse 40 of chapter 10, Joshua defeated the whole land, the hill country, the Negev, the lowland and the slopes and, all their kings, he left no one remaining. That's such a hard, hard thing to read. I mean, it just, he left no one remaining. You know, it sounds, you know, in a way kind of innocent if you read it, but when you understand the meaning of it, it's just, the devastation is terrible. He, he utterly destroyed all that breathed is that next part, you know, as the Lord God had commanded. And it's just, wow. I mean, it is just hard to comprehend that. It just, goes against everything that I feel within my body. And I'm sure you guys feel the same. Um, and so then, you know, at the end of chapter 10, Joshua returns uh, to camp at Gilgal. And then chapter 11, you know, this king of Hazor heard of this. So he sent to another king and to another king and to another king and to the kings who were in all the northern hill country. And in the uh, Arabah, south of, you know, and, and, you know, and, so again, they gather a large number of people. Chap verse 4 of chapter 11. They came out with all their troops, a great army, in number like the sand of the seashore. That's a lot, you know. I mean, a huge number of people, a huge army, you know. that It's just, it's kind of almost hard to imagine that there are that many people there. But, you know, they came out like the number of the sand on the seashore. And... You know, maybe that's a, an exaggeration, just like I've told you a million times, you know. Well, you know, it might not be a million times that way, but, you know, it, it's there's a lot. A lot of people coming out against them. In verse 6, And the Lord said to Joshua, Do not be afraid of them, for tomorrow at this time I will hand them, I will hand over all of them slain to Israel. And then, you know, and this happens, you know, that just, you know, the, the, the people, they, they struck them down until they left no one remaining. And Joshua did as the Lord had commanded. And, you know, they hamstrung the horses. I mean, and this is one of the places where, I mean, uh, what, what purpose did that serve? I just, I mean, another one of those, ee, I can't understand that. Just don't do that, you know, but, um, uh, Verse 10, Joshua turned at that time and took Hazor, struck its king down. And he put the sword to all who were in it, utterly destroying there. No one was left, you know. And and um, and he burned that, that city of Hazor with fire. But, you know, but then verse 13, but Israel burned none of the towns that stood on mounds except Hazor. So, Again, the majority of the towns were left as they were. The, the buildings, the structures, and, you know, the, the Israelites were going to need places to live and to inhabit. And so there were quite a few of them, too. And in verse 15, as the Lord commanded his servant Moses, so Moses commanded Joshua, he left nothing undone of all that the Lord had commanded. So Joshua took 
all of the lands and, you know, the conquest of the promised land. And uh, verse, you know, the, these other kings and, you know, they, they weren't seeking peace. Verse 20 said it was the Lord's doing to harden their hearts that they would come against Israel. And, and and God led them in battle, and they were successful. In verse 21, at that time, Joshua came and wiped out the Anakim from the hill country. And the Anakim were were the about large people, probably like Goliath, you know, was a descendant of them. They were huge people by all standards and muscular. And, uh, and it says that he wiped all of them out in that region, except there were a few left scattered around. And verse 12, or chapter 12, rather, goes and, and talks about all of the kings and all of the, the cities that, that Joshua destroyed and captured. And and there were, it says, 31 kings in all. And, you know, so God has faithfully brought his people to the land, um, cleared the land of, of all the people that were there to give it to his people. And again, it is because God is faithful to his promise. And it's just, it doesn't make it any easier to read, but it's, it's what we have as a history of how the Israelites came into possession of the promised land.